Hey guys, it's Viewmasters Reactions, and we are catching up on Deadwood today. So this is going to be episode four, season one. Three episodes this week, guys. I was a couple weeks behind. I caught up on True Detective. I've never fallen behind on the wire, maybe by a day or so, but not, not huge. And I'm also doing Cobra Kai randomly throughout the week. So if you want to watch any of those... True Detective's almost done, Cobra Kai's halfway over, The Wire's almost done with season three, and then we got this. I'm also doing Game of Thrones on Sundays. And starting Monday, I'm going to do The Hundred, season six, because I'm all caught up on that. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on, guys. Luckily, nothing is in the movies this week besides Endgame, and I've seen it six times, so I don't have to worry. Last we saw on Deadwood... Timothy Oliphant and his friend got the rights to buy the place. Uh, Ian McShane sold him the lot. There were stipulations, but they pretty much got the deal they wanted. They just can't do prostitution and gambling, which they didn't want to anyway, as far as we know. I'm assuming that's correct. We saw the new people open up in town, the new gambling, new prostitution, high-end stuff. Everyone's going to them probably now because Ian McShane's got a lower class. Although it's probably cheaper, which is what the guy was saying. He's like, we're not going to conflict because we're dealing with a different kind of product. So we're going to have to see how that goes. And last we saw, Ian McShane basically gave the high sign to his boy to go kill the rich guy. And he threw him off the mountain. But after throwing him off the mountain, went down and found that they actually hit gold. They struck a gold. So... Lots of stuff going on, guys. I'm just going to jump in because I got three episodes to watch. So here we go, guys. Episode four, season one, Deadwood. This guy again. I raised 100. Why does this guy look so beat every time? Back 100. He looks worse and worse each time. That man's overplaying his hand. And he clearly never learns. Whatever the fuck I got left. 420 back to you. Where's this kid getting all this money? You got more nerve and sands, huh, Bill? What have you got? Man stays on fours. <laughs> they call this a game of skill? Well, you gutted me, didn't you, Bill? You son of a bitch. He just had fours? I thought, I just assumed he had queens. So I guess they're playing at the new place of operation. Go eat, Jack. <laughs> Where does this kid keep getting all this cash to lose? He's rolling around with hundreds of dollars. Back then, he's a millionaire. I thank you for that kindness. You just bought yourself something with that. Even though he's a total scumbag, I kind of like him. Boys can't go near a cliff without jumping off. He reminds me of Ziggy from The Wire, but for some reason, I don't mind him. Montana okay with you? The only other nickname I ever had was Sloth. <laughs> don't seem to fit. Montana it is. among the seven sins. I guess I got out before the other surfaced. Montana's not a bad nickname. I dig Montana. The missus operates a circus. He's in Cincinnati. Oh. Waiting for word of my success. I thought Calamity Jane Saul was this girl. Put our last sifting cradle aside for you. Why don't you go ahead and use it, Bill? What slows me down is thinking about freezing my balls off in a creek for the cocksuckers I'd lose the gold to at poker. <laughs> I'm flat out tired. My I hope I called me Kite. Kite? Because I was always high. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to fight it no more. Understand me, Charlie? And I don't want you pissing in my ear about it. He knows what he is. Can you let me go to hell the way I want to? He's just trying to be a good friend. But Bill's basically like, dude, I'm an adult. This is what I want. Leave me alone. I want to gamble and fuck around and drink my liquor. Good luck in Cheyenne. They're good friends, though. I give Charlie credit. He's a good, good dude. Good to you. Too, Bill. He's like above and beyond a good friend. Oh, the rich guy. No 
my word. Looks dead, don't it? Yes. See, my reasoning was, get the dude his money back, keep him from asking him to think of you. Here's now, that's unnecessary. Make the offer to the wife. Oh, God. She must be flipping the shit like, what is going to happen to me now? Watch, she takes over and First, makes a fortune. First, $20,000 is a lot of money. Second, it's my fucking money. Third, the widow being a dope fiend might let matters rest. But fourth, well, this camp has a lot more to offer me than $20,000 as long as I don't get killed by the fucking Pinkertons. Why take the chance? I would like to see the doctor. Of course. Who wouldn't? I'll get him right away. It's like we... Before he sees me, please, to examine my husband's injuries, I'd like his opinion on how they were sustained. I assume your husband died in a fall. All I asked you to do was to get the goddamn doctor. Of course, madam. Questions whether it's fate she blames or people in the camp. What are you looking for? twiddling your thumbs overnight, were you? Look at this. He's got it all framed out nice and everything. Please come in, doctor. Not you, DB. You stay outside. Exactly. Everyone's in on this shit. Even the doctor. Well, no, but the doctor is a good guy, but still being paid off by Ian McShane. I do not know how your husband's skull got caved in. You're a bright woman, aren't you? Leave. Going through hell here. You better leave. Go on home, Miss Yeah, take your drugs and leave before you die. That's what he's saying. He feels bad because it's like the town is run by Ian McShane. He tries as best he can, but he can't commit suicide. What's your mood? <laughs> Chipper. That was a waste of a lot of drugs. I'm overcome with remorse, Mrs. Garrett, that I failed to change the course of events. It was me your husband outbid for the claim. If it will simplify your situation in any way, I renew my offer at 12000 I know it won't bring him back. No. She's going to be like... She's going to be like, I'm staying and I'm going to do it. All right, madam. And didn't you McShane tell him to offer 20? He offered 12. Perhaps Mr. Hickok would be willing to advise me on my current situation. I'd pay whatever fee he thought appropriate. Watch. To you. I have no one else in the camp. Anyway, how's... Uh... Fifty dollars a visit sound three times a week. Holy crap. Done. Hey. That guy is from a lot of stuff too. Thanks very much. Howdy. Howdy yourself. You the operator? Cytology. Name's Crane. I'd like a room, I'd like exclusive use of a safe, and I'd like to shoot some dice. I'd like to think this is the first day of a long friendship, Mr. Crane. How are you, Cy? You've done some good work on this place. Huh? They know each Andy's other. Nice work. Hey, Andy. Hello, sweetheart. So let's go. Let's get something working. We can rob Cy. <laughs> How about a bath first and a nap and some sex with an unfamiliar woman? Sure. Signal when ready, Commander. If I didn't make my point, I'd like to get something fucking working. Sure, Andy. Who the hell is this guy? This guy's flip-flops from one second to the next. How's Andy look? Like he spent three weeks on a wagon. I'm optimistic, Al. And she's promised a prompt reply. I just thought she'd say yes on the spot.
You did offer her the whole 20. <laughs> you e-masked me there. E.B. I offered 12. Did I ask you to play her? Can't you follow one simple fucking instruction? She will take the 12 out and be happy to get it. And all you'll have to decide is how much of the eight you save should go to me. <sighs> You're incorrigible. I'll do my best. A wife inevitably feels she's had some part in what befalls her husband. Unanswerable hereafter on different terms. I need to know what I'd be selling them. You don't believe the money's to keep the Pinkertons away. Why pay me? I if it were a, a ransom to keep the Pinkertons off, why not pay Brom instead of killing him? It's this saloon operator you think is pulling the strings. Al Swearingen, it, it was certainly he. I'll try for a feel of the bottom. What shall I pay you, Mr. Hickok? I prefer you pick the figure. Is a hundred dollars enough? Perfect. Uh, we got a room full of dirty guys. This guy's running upstairs to tell Ian McShane. There he is, running upstairs. Downstairs. Bill's here asking questions. Everyone there is like a dirty guy. Hey guys, you just watched Deadwood. If you click up here, you'll go to the next part of the next episode or the next episode. Click down here, you'll see something else I do, like a trailer reaction, maybe another show I do, something like that. And click over here if you want to subscribe to my channel. Comments down below. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.